In order to do any homebrew computer projects, you'll probably need an EEPROM programmer of some kind. If you Google EEPROM programmer, the option that comes up most often is this thing, the TL8662. And while it looks nice, and I'm sure it does its job very well, I figured that for how often I would need a tool like this, and for how much it costs, I could probably just build my own programmer with stuff that I had on hand. The reason why I needed a programmer in the first place was for my tomato homebrew computer, which I already made a video about. Originally, I only needed to write a 2K EEPROM chip, so I built a programmer out of an Arduino and two shift registers. That worked fine at first, but it was slow and meant that I couldn't really use the Arduino for something else. To use a larger ROM chip, I would need a less janky solution. I had some AVR microcontrollers in my box of goodies, and I figured I could design a board around one of those. AVR micros in a 40-pin package usually have four 8-bit GPIO ports, which means I can have one port driving the data, two driving the address, and one port used for control signals. Using GPIO pins also means that I can read from the chips by setting data pins to be inputs instead of outputs. The first big question I had to ask myself was how would this interface with my PC? The Arduino that I had used in the breadboard programmer has a chip that can talk directly via USB protocol, which is something I took for granted. The micro which I was planning on using didn't. The MCP2221 serial converter can convert USB to UART or I2C, and vice versa. The circuit is easy to set up and doesn't require any special configurations on the PC or the controller side. It also shows up as a USB device right away in Windows, without needing any extra drivers. There are only two chips on this board, so I got the schematics drawn up and sent it to the manufacturer, along with the first version of the tomato board. Those had some issues and I needed to order a second batch, but the programmer worked just fine the first time. Not bad for something I didn't even bother to prototype first. The only problem was that the silk screen got printed on the wrong side of the board, due to a miscommunication. Writing the firmware was easy, minus a few hiccups that I'll get to. I added a pin header to the board to allow for instant programming from an Arduino, which means I can update or add features without having to take anything apart. I set up my toolchain so that I could compile code and send it directly to the board using Arduino as ISP. Using a chip that's similar to an Arduino Uno makes things a lot easier. Also, did you know that 32K EEPROM chips have built-in write protection? I spent a whole day thinking that my design was flawed until I looked closer at the datasheet. According to the write-up, this feature should be disabled by default, but all the chips that I got had it enabled. Thankfully, it was easy to write a function to disable it, and it didn't require burning any fuses or applying more than 5 volts to any of the pins. It just goes to show that you should never assume things and always read the datasheet front to back before you spend your money. To program over serial, there's a set of commands that the board will recognize. I wrote some Python scripts that handle this and let you send or read files of any size. Running the script will write most ROM images in under a minute. Using this as a programmer for the tomato has worked out just fine so far. I haven't noticed any trouble with data being written incorrectly in the month or so that I've been using it. There are still some improvements that I can make though. Right now, it only supports one type of ROM chip, but it shouldn't be too hard to reorganize the code and allow for any type of parallel chip to be supported. If I could go back and change the design, I would rearrange how things are laid out on the board to make it more compact and add some status LEDs aside from the green power one that's on there now. If you're interested in this project, all the blueprints, PCB files, source code, and scripts are available on my GitHub. Keep an eye out because I've been committing changes at least once a week for the past few months, and I plan to continue making updates as the year goes on. That's all for today, so if you made it this far, then thanks for watching. The MCP2221 Serial Converter can convert USB to UART. Just run the script. If you want to write to a chip, just run the script, and it takes less than a minute to... I can't, I can't even do it right when I'm doing the funny voice.